Well, welcome everyone. My name is Thomas Montgomery. I'm with the 509 Pacific, the 501c3 nonprofit that has received a grant to provide this financial literacy program for free. And we talk about financial literacy. We're talking about financial literacy related to businesses. And so not consumer, but business financial literacy. And specifically our goal is to go through this four-week curriculum and prepare everyone to have a fundable business. So we have a different topic each week. Week one is on business planning, or states here, the business plan. We will send each of you the notes that we're going through after today's session, as well as some other resources that we'll talk about at the conclusion. So if you want to take notes, you can, but we'll certainly get this to you. But I don't want to jump, just jump right into business plans. I think we need to step back and, and look at the, the larger picture of what we're trying to accomplish and who we are. So what we're going to be doing, again, is over four weeks, 28 days, just less than a month, our goal is to work together to create a fundable business. Now, that word fundable may strike you as strange, but the, the common example we give is that there's lots of people that want funding to start or grow a business and some people that need funding to start or grow a business. But when it comes to funding, when it comes to the lenders and the banks and, and other extenders of, of credit, of financing of money, they are looking for individuals that they feel confident that will be able to pay them back. And so there's a certain element of, of credibility or fundability that we'll be learning about and applying to your business. So when we talk about a fundable business, we need a we mean a business that meets the underwriting criteria to get approved. And so essentially what you could spin it is to say that that we know the formula for funding. We know what it takes to qualify for business funding. Now what is true though is this there are many different sources of capital, and each has their own underwriting criteria. So in truth, there's not just one singular formula, but we can prepare for the general requirements, and if there needs to be any tweaks based upon the specific lender that you're looking for, we can, of course, make those tweaks together. We appreciate you enrolling in the free entrepreneurship funding program. And just simply by enrolling in the program, it says a lot about you. Uh, if, if you know the background on the program, we used to teach this as a credit earning college course. So students would have to apply for the community college. They'd have to sign up for the course. They'd have to pay three credit hours. They'd have to buy the textbook. And we'd spend 12 or 14 weeks going through it. Uh, when we did receive this grant, of course, we took it out of the academic setting and we consolidated it down, down to just four weeks. But it's, it's really good information that's going to really prepare you to have a fundable business. But what I was speaking of in, in terms of what makes you and, and us different than the masses is most people think about making money by getting a job. And that's really what our school systems teach. That's what our society thinks about. How do we make money? We get a job or we get a better paying job. But you and I are, are different from that. What we're thinking about is how do we create a business? How do we create jobs for others? So it's, it's much different being of the entrepreneurial mindset than it is of the employee mindset. So as stated here, people like us, you and I, focus on creating jobs and wealth for ourselves because it's really difficult to ever become wealthy working for someone else. And I realize it may not just be money that motivates you, but we do have to have our eye on profitability. Now, we don't have to have a profitable business from day one, but we need to achieve, we need to strive to achieve and maintain profitability. Because if we don't maintain a profitable business, our business probably won't continue. So as we talk about business plans today, it's crucial to understand about success in business. And so this doesn't matter what industry you're in, but we need to focus on solving problems. And this is gonna tie into the business plan in a moment. Successful businesses solve problems. 
And so if you look around you, maybe there are things that you could think of how you could do differently or do better. And that could be kind of that inspiration. You see a problem that you want to solve. And by creating a business that solves those problems, you can monetize that and earn a great income. And the truth is the bigger the problem that you're solving, typically the more money that you can make. So that's what we should be looking for. We should be looking for problems that exist and solutions to those problems. Now, this brings up an interesting point. What if, if your idea isn't really all that innovative? Well, it's okay to have a me too business, as they call it, me too business. In other words, you, you want to do something that other people already do. But you're still going to need to find some sort of point of differentiation because why would clients come to you versus the other players, the other participants in your industry? But in general, the way that will create wealth, if that's important to you, is finding a solution to a problem that's not currently being met and then build a business around it. Now, with that, we could find a problem and we could have a solution, but we also are going to need a market or what's called sometimes a target market, someone that wants to buy the good or service you want to sell. So that's just a bit of a big picture overview. Let's go ahead and drill into some key elements of the business plan. After today's recording, I will send you the notes here that we're going through and also a business plan template. We have one that's paper-based, and then we have one that's a bit more interactive and online. I would recommend the one that's online because it can give you, I think, better instructions and examples and can even conduct some industry analysis. So let's say that you're going to start a trucking firm. Well, when we put together our profitability estimates of our trucking firm, most likely it should be similarly profitable to others in the same industry. And if we're way above that or way below that, if we're outside of what the industry norms are, that's a red flag for lenders. So obviously, online resources can give us more tools and more interaction, but we, will, uh, we, we can make available either for you. So let's get into business planning. Now, when I, when I taught this at the college full time, I feel like sometimes people think of a business plan as just simply something that they're told that they're supposed to have, but maybe it's not really that important. It's not that essential. But if our goal is to get funding, right, well, what's the name of the curriculum that you enrolled in? Free Entrepreneurship Funding Program. So if we are getting prepared to go to funding, then a business plan is typically important. Now, what did I say earlier? There's, there's different lenders, there's different sources of capital, and not all of them have the same underwriting criteria. So in other words, do all lenders require a business plan? No, the, the answer is no. Do many of them? Yes. And is it going to help us get prepared for funding? Absolutely. So your business plan is the foundation of your business. And again, I, I know, I know, I know, I know so many of you are passionate about what you're doing. So many of you are very busy doing what you do. T to stop and spend time developing a business plan just may not seem like the best use of available time, but it does help us flush through our ideas, our assumptions, and helps us get better prepared. So a business plan, it's the roadmap of how to structure, run, and grow your business. Now you might ask, well, what, what if I already have a business? My business has been in operation for some time now. Do I still need to create a business plan? I didn't have one then. I, I would say yes, because many elements of the business plan is going to be very important as we prepare for funding. So in, in a typical scenario, we would build a plan and then we would implement that plan, but some of you have already been implementing, and that's okay. Uh, the, the best type of learning they call is experiential learning. We learn by doing. So I do think that we all should create a business plan, and that is going to be our, our exercise as part of week one. 
There are some key elements of an effective business plan. There's lots of different parts or elements, but there are some that are especially important, and that's what we're going to focus on today. When I send you this, uh, the recording with these notes, you'll have the template that has more elements than just what we're covering today. But the ones that we're covering today, I think, are the absolute key elements that we need to think the most about and prepare the most for. An example would be use of funds. What is that? That's essentially our shopping list. What, what is it that we need money for? So often, I have the pleasure of working with, with thousands of different entrepreneurs every year and helping them build fundable businesses. And so often, when it comes to use of funds, what will happen is people will just kind of spurt out a number. But that's not the way that it should happen. Think about if you and I were to go to Walmart this afternoon. Ideally, we'd create a list, and then we buy whatever is on the list, we put it in the shopping cart, and then we check out, probably at self-checkout because they want us to check out ourselves now. But how much money do we need when we check out? It depends upon what we put in the cart, what was on our list. So ideally, we don't just pick a number out of thin air and say, I need X dollars. We should create a list of what it is that we need, what the price of each item on the list is, and then when we add it up, that'll give us an accurate use of funds. That, that's one of the differences in business finance versus consumer finance. I know with consumer finance, you, you might just apply for a loan and they give you whatever they give you. But more often than not, with business financing, we need to go in with a specific request, a substantiation for that request, and an explanation of that request. So the use of funds is one element that we'll be spending a lot of attention on. Financial projections. Now, some people, well, there's a lot of misnomers, a lot of misinformation, untruths when it comes to business funding. For instance, oh, you can't get business as a startup. That's not true. Even the SBA will fund a brand new business that uh, a, the startup word is a bit generic, but uh, let's say pre-revenue. But if we're such a new business that we've not started to sell a good or service to a customer, we've not started to bring in money or not money yet, much money yet, that's where financial projections are even more important because this is where we can tell the lender that with the injection of capital, here's the amount of money that we think we'll be able to generate even if we've not done that historically. Normally, we'll build financial projections out three years, 36 months. So our goal is to go through the four-week process together. Week one is on the business plan. We're going to talk about some key elements of the business plan today. I'll send you these notes. I'll send you the paper-based business plan template. And if you would like the online version, let us know and we can get you set up on that. So as I mentioned, well, let's scroll a little bit of time. There's not just one type of a business plan. And, and what's really interesting, one of the lenders that we work with the most, what they want is a one-page business plan. I, I wouldn't say that it's an executive summary, but I guess that's a decent analogy. They want that business plan to be on one page and really to answer specific questions. Now, the good news is we know what questions they want answered. But Different lenders may have different requirements, so that, that's okay. But what we're going to do together is build a, a general, what we'll call a universal business plan. And if we need to, we can, of course, uh, alter based upon needs, as I mentioned before. So there are some key elements of a business plan. Let's start with the problem worth solving. Now, this is often confusing to people, but it shouldn't be. So this isn't what your problem is. Like, oh, I need a million dollars. That's my problem. My problem is I don't have a million dollars. That, that's not it at all. We're looking at the marketplace. We're looking out from our eyes out to the marketplace, and we're trying to identify and describe a problem or an unmet need that we're going to address for our customers. Uh, what, what's an example? Let, let's say, well, I'll give you a real example. I, I, I live in a small town in Texas. And until recently, we didn't have a Domino's pizza. 
and Domino's is known for relatively affordable, convenient pizzas. Now, there was a Domino's pizza, but it was about a 30-minute drive away, so obviously they wouldn't deliver. So I even thought about buying that franchise for my town, but I, I didn't. Someone else did. But I can imagine in their business plan, they were able to identify an unmet need. There's obviously a demand for pizzas. It's one of the most popular foods in, in our society, yet there was not a pizzeria, I guess if you will, of a pizza restaurant that made pizzas and delivered. So we're trying to identify something that's out there that, that we can resolve, not what our problem is. If your company is doing something new and different, then we have to explain why it needs that innovation. So Let's say that you're Elon Musk and you decide to, to build SpaceX and your plan is to travel to Mars. Well, is there really an unmet need for travel to Mars? Well, not to the general population, but certainly he was able to explain the benefits of that and the innovative and the innovation perspective and be able to get funding. So it may be something like the pizzeria example. Hey, there's not a Domino's in my town. I want to go form a pizza restaurant like Domino's or buy a Domino's franchise. Or maybe it's something that just doesn't even exist. It's, it's not on anyone's radar. And so, of course, when you get to these types of elements, this is where the largest wealth is typically created. As we mentioned before, how big the problem is that we provide a solution, typically the bigger the problem, the bigger the profitability or the bigger the wealth that can be created. But regardless, we need to be able to identify what's the problem that we solve. Because you've heard the saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If there's just not a need for something, why would we want to start a business to provide that service? Because chances are we probably won't sell much of what we offer because there's not a need. So we're trying to describe in the business plan to the reader, which is often the lender, the underwriters, what we do, what the problem is that, that we're trying to solve. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to type that into the Q&A. So that's the first key element. And so we, we've seen many people start with an idea and pivot, and that's okay. You know, part of this process is it may be that we end up with a bad plan. It just, it doesn't make sense. I was a high school teacher before I was a college professor, and we developed business plans with our high school students. And uh, we, we actually were featured in a newspaper article, and it was called Permission to Fail. So in other words, we didn't give a lower grade to the student groups that developed a business plan that didn't work out because that's part of the benefit of planning is we may realize through planning this isn't that great of an idea. I worked at the SBA, Small Business Administration, and so I would commonly see people come in and I'd help them develop a plan. They had great passion, great ideas, but it doesn't always work out. And it's much better to figure out that it's not a good idea at the planning stage than it is the implementation stage. Uh, this is our phone number if you need us, but we're on to page two. All right, so solution. So we identified the problem here. What's the problem that's worth solving? Now we need to explain what our solution is. So we're going to explain how our company is going to address the problem that we identified above. And then we need to nail down, well, what is it we're going to offer? What products and or services do we offer and how will they meet the customer's needs? So problem and solution. So these are parts of an effective, well thought out business plan. We shouldn't just jump right into, I want to do this. Well, is there a problem? In other words, is it not being done now or not being done as efficiently or as high quality? What makes us different in our solution that would attract people? So problem and solution. Let's move on. Now we want to identify, well, who exactly is going to buy this? So that's where we get into market size and, and segments. Sometimes this is referred to as your target market. 
We need to avoid at all costs coming into this mindset. Well, everyone could be our target audience. Everyone could be our customer. Everyone needs this. In general, it's very rare that you have something that everyone needs. So, and, and also it's, it's impossible or near impossible to afford to advertise and market to everyone. Just looking at the U.S. population, we have over 300 million people. So if everyone is our target market, think about how expensive it would be to reach everyone. But maybe we can instead nail down who our target market is. This doesn't mean that we won't sell to others, but who is our target market? Who is our ideal customer? Who are the people or companies who suffer from the problem that we're solving? And so we might decide that our target market is based upon age or gender. It's okay to have a target market based upon a given racial uh, mix. Different target markets have different buying patterns, right? So if we're selling uh, a new product for male pattern baldness, you'd probably think, well, the males are probably men are probably our target market. Or are they? Maybe it's it's their wives and significant others that would not like to see that glowing bald spot on top of their significant other's head. So there, there are some instances where the user is different than the buyer. Think about anything marketed to children, right? There, there's toys. Think back to Tickle Me Elmo. I know I'm aging myself, but Tickle Me Elmo was a big hit but it wasn't six-year-olds going to buy it, right? It was the parents. But ultimately, we need to know who our target market is. And we can't just rest with, oh, anyone or everyone. And then we need to try to size. Well, how big is that target market? We want to think about how many of the prospects of our target market are likely to buy from us and how much they typically spend over the course of a year. Is it something that they buy one time or they buy reoccurring? Because we're going to need to build some financial projections. Remember, we talked about projections up here. And to have projections, that needs to be based upon who is our target market, what are we going to sell, and who are we going to sell it to. Now, again, when I send you the template, it's going to help you. Uh, apply these theories that we're discussing. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel, for, feel free to ask them. Now, we can't walk into this thinking we're the only show in town. That's rarely going to be the case. It could be, but it's rarely the case that we have the only solution to a target audience's problem. Therefore, we have to think about current alternatives. So we need to describe the competitive landscape for our products or services. Now, do you know the difference between direct competitors and indirect? So a direct competitor is someone that's essentially selling the same solution to the same customer for the same problem. So there, there is a direct overlap. So let's say that we go with this Domino's pizza idea for my small town, and we want to get financing through the SBA to open that franchise, which is actually fairly easy to accomplish. But with that being said, there's no other Domino's in town, but is there anyone else selling Italian food? Probably so. So there could be direct competitors. They're doing pretty much what we're doing, solving the same problem, or there could be indirect competitors that are also selling food, example, in the same town, but not pizza. So we need to understand the competitive landscape because in most cases, people are having their needs met, maybe in not as good of a way, but, but they're, they're buying something other than Domino's Pizza now. So as we get to the second bullet, if we don't have any direct competitors yet, and that's even better, it, it's great because the, the more competition we have, typically the lower the price is going to be because there's going to be competitive pricing between the players. So uh, we need, even if there's not any direct competitors, we still need to identify, well, what are our prospective customers doing now? Where are they, how are they meeting their needs, even if it's not met as well as what we could meet them? So we, we don't want to fall into trap of, of saying, 
uh, everyone's our target market. We don't have any competition. Uh, we do need to identify our target market, and there is competition, either direct or indirect. Advantages. So this is what makes us different or better. And, and Elon Musk would say, don't worry about being different, worry about being better. What makes us better than our competitors that we've identified? Use of funds, I kind of tipped off earlier, as our shopping list. What is it that we need money for and what's it going to cost? We add it all up and that's the amount of the use of funds that we're looking for. Now, you may think about time frame. You know, well, what if I'm going to need something three years from now? Sh should that be on my use of funds? No, we, we should take this one time period at a at one period at a time. What do we need now? And then we can get that funding. We can inject it into the business. We can grow. And then we can go for multiple rounds of capital. But Norm, I know it may sound easier and more attractive to say, well, I'll just I'll borrow all the money that I will need over the next 10 years right now that's probably unlikely that you would qualify for that much because each time that you get more funding, hopefully you inject that money into the business, the business grows and now it qualifies for more and more because the business is growing, it's more and more profitable. So we have the uses of funds, how we're gonna spend it. And then the other side of the equation is the sources of funds. We'll talk about this more in week three. Week three's topic gets into this, but we need to identify where do we want this money to come from? We said we needed X dollars. Where is it going to come from? Do we want to get loans from, from banks or credit unions or finance companies? Do we want investors, money that we don't have to pay back, but we have to share profitability with? And then also, how much are you willing to invest into your business? A lot of times people will come to us saying, well, no, 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 I, I don't want to put any of my money. I just want to put other people's money in. And while that may be possible, in, in most cases, lenders and investors would like to see that you have some skin in the game. So I'm not saying that's always the case, but we work with participants, e even if your budget's really tight, we have what's called the opportunity fund. So we can get some dollars in your pocket so you can invest into your business. Because again, in many cases, lenders and or investors would like you to see, like to see some skin in the game by yourself. So with that being said, that concludes week one. So what's gonna happen now? Of course, if, if you need us, you can call us here. But what's gonna happen now is we, if you've registered for today's class, we'll send you the notes, we'll send you the business plan template, and then we'll be available to assist you as we're building out your business plan. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Thank you so much for enrolling. We'll be back together for week two, one week from today, and then week three, two weeks from today, and then we'll finish up week four, of course, three weeks from today. But again, if you need any help, let us know. You can call us and we'll be happy to assist you. Have a great day and we look forward to working with you to build out a fundable business plan. Bye-bye.